Hello and welcome to the Bookshelf Odyssey. My name is Art and today I'm going to be doing a Victober wrap-up. My Victober this year, I had epic major plans and they all just kind of crumbled <laughs> to pieces. One of the problems I had this year is that I tried to read too many Victorian novels at the same time and I should have spaced it out more because some of the other books I read I enjoyed but I, I, I was reading something like four at the same time. I just couldn't decide which ones to start. And I tell you what, trying all of them doesn't work, especially when at least two of them had very similar plot lines that I kept getting confused. But I will um, talk about here real quick, just some of the things I did read and I did enjoy. First of all, I read a nonfiction book called Charles Dickens, Places and Objects by Paul Kendall. And that was published just a couple years ago, but it covers... Uh, it looks at the, the life and works of Charles Dickens, but specifically at places and things that featured in his novels that had some importance to him. Uh, so so towns like Rochester and um, places like the, the Marshall Sea Prison and, uh, you know, uh, Kent, I think, was another town they, they looked at. And it, it was overall, it was very informative. I, I don't know if it was... Um, as entertaining as some could be. I don't know if it was meant to be entertaining or just informative. I, I did enjoy reading it and I appreciate you know, the insight that this will give me that the things that really mattered and the places that mattered to Dickens, how he would incorporate them into his works was, was very interesting. I also read uh, The Secrets of Hartwood Hall by Katie Lumsden. I had the wonderful privilege of interviewing her on my podcast and here on the channel and I'll make sure to link that video in the notes below and I really enjoyed her novel. It was definitely a tribute to Victorian novels while still I think as she said in her interview that she wanted to write a novel that couldn't have been written back then but she could write now so it's not just a, a copy of a Victorian novel. Essentially that's a story of a uh, a governess uh, whose husband has died under mysterious, cir uh, possible mysterious circumstances, and uh, she becomes a governess to a house with a young, with a young boy, and um, the, the 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 title is not lying. There are many secrets um, going on at Hartwood Hall, and I think this book is in very close conversation with books like The Tenant of Wildfell Hall or. Um, you know, uh, the, the Bronte sisters, especially some of what they've written. I, I think there's an interesting conversation to be had between those two books. But in the end, this really does stand on its own merits as as a, a wonderful piece of fiction. And I thoroughly enjoyed reading it. And um, the, the mysteries that she lays down, I think, have a very satisfying and um, I would say very shocking twists along the way. Uh, at least I didn't see it coming. So uh, for what it's worth, <laughs> it's, although some have said it's not hard to pull one over on me. Uh, but anyway, uh, I read it for the journey, not to try to outsmart the author. But yeah, I really enjoyed that. I know a lot of people have talked about this book and have talked, uh, done uh, reviews and things. And I, I think, you know, just count my voice in as one of many that uh, this is one you should you should pick up. And I am uh, really looking forward to Katie writing more books down the road. And then to get to some actual Victorian literature that I read, I read J. Sheridan Le Fanu's um, collection, Madame Crawl's Ghost and Other Stories. Uh, this is a collection of mostly supernatural stories that uh, ghost stories, uh, mystery stories, uh, things like that, that he is perhaps well known for. The synopsis says that um, J. Sheridan Le Fanu's Madame Kroll's Ghosts and Other Stories is a chilling collection of horror tales that will send shivers down your spine. With his signature blend of suspense, mystery, and the supernatural, Le Fanu, uh, you know, that's a name I need to know how to pronounce. I need to learn how to pronounce. Uh, he weaves tales that will keep you on the edge of your seat. From the eerie haunted house of Madame Kroll's ghost to the eerie circumstances surrounding the child that went with the fairies, these stories are not for the faint of heart. The wonderful ghost stories include Madame Kroll's ghost, Squire Toby's will, Dickon the devil, 
the child that went with the fairies, the white cat of Drumguniol, and many others are collected in this anthology. I read it through the month of October, and it, it there were several in there that were very creepy, very spooky, and I um, it was just the right time of year to read um, to read Sheridan. So uh, that's one I would recommend. I had a th- great time with that. I don't know if any stories like jumped out at me as being you know, life-changing and fantastic. Um, I'm going to put on my all-time favorites list, but um, definitely good stories to read in the month of October around Halloween. Uh, And then next I read The Odd Women by George Gissing, which um, I enjoyed, but I was getting it mixed up a lot with Man and Wife by Wilkie Collins. Uh, Both plots had to do a lot about marriage and about uh, women and their roles and and things of that nature. Um, and so unfortunately, I don't think I could give a fair reflection on either one of those two books. Uh, definitely going to revisit The Odd Women, as I feel like there was something very interesting being said there. But I, I along the way, like I said, I was getting the plot mixed up and confused with another book I was reading. And, and just in the end, I was left feeling um, confused. Uh, but this says that The Odd Women is set in a smoggy London with heroines ranging from the idealistic, financially independent Mary Barfoot to the maddened sisters who struggle to get by in low-paying jobs. Being a fascinating, trailblazing, and early work of feminism and social realism, this novel reflects the important sexual and cultural issues of the late 19th century. Here, women are portrayed as odd and marginal in relation to an ideal. So, yeah, this book has this this contrast with, you know, here's the ideal woman, or, or here's the ideal woman, and these women don't meet up to that ideal. And uh, th- there's one character that gets proposed to, and she, she is just pretty much like, knows it's coming, says, okay, just get it over with, turns him down. And and the man's surprised, but you know it's it's like she is happy with the work that she's doing. She finds um, satisfaction in it, and she finds um, you know purpose in it. And she doesn't want to give that up. And that was considered to be very odd at the time and very strange. But uh, I, I I think this novel has a lot to teach us about the position women had, how far they've come today, but still how much farther we have to go as a society when maybe we can um, get over this idea of there being the ideal woman. And, you know, if a woman doesn't meet our ideal, then she's odd or strange or an outcast or, or uh, as many get today, you know, get labeled as being difficult to work with because they don't fit into a um, into a stereotype or a box that we want to put them in. So uh, I, I really enjoyed that book, but, um, you know, I, I had some trouble with it, but it's one I'm going to revisit again. Um, definitely. Uh, then man and woman by Wilkie Collins explores the the complicated, um, uh, marriage laws at the time and how easy it was and yet complicated it was to get into a marriage, but difficult to get out. And towards the beginning of the novel, especially, I found it to be kind of funny with some of the situations that were being set up. I will be revisiting down the road. Um, I, I enjoyed it enough to re- to know that I really like Wilkie Collins's work. So probably starting next year, I'm going to go back and start reading through him chronologically and um, take a couple years to go through his uh, his works. And uh, but I've I've read uh, three or four by him by now. And and you know the two, the woman in white and. Um, you know, his, his other one that's popular. I can't think of it off the top of my head now, but, but the book I really enjoyed, uh, this past month called a burglary or unconscious influence by Amy Dillwyn. And it's published by the, uh, Hano's Welsh women's classics, uh, series. And I received this book from, uh, Kate Howe. I'm a part of her, uh, Patreon, uh, book club. And I won that, uh, one, I think it was earlier this spring, um, I won that book. She sent it to me. Um, Kate, that was just, you know, perfect. <laughs> a uh, The perfect book for me. It was like, you know, uh, my my reading tastes. So this, this um, 
says that it, it is a clever yet comic and riveting novel. This Victorian comedy of manners was first published in 1883 as a three-volume novel. When heiress Ethel Carton is robbed of her prized jewels, a local collier and poacher is accused. But the real culprit, and, and these aren't really spoilers, uh, these are things that are revealed shortly in the beginning of the novel. So it, it's not so much a who done it. it's more of a, not even a why done it. It was more, you you know everything, the characters don't. And it's like you're watching them to see if they'll figure it out. So almost a bit like Columbo in that sense, but, but Victorian. But anyway, the real culprit is Sylvester, a gentleman and shady financier. Um, let me adjust my bifocals. Uh, who goes unsuspected until he falls for the headstrong yet moral heroine Imogen Reese, Ethel's young cousin. And then um, the, the story really looks at the influence then that both Ethel and Imogen have on um, on Sylvester, the, the, the gentleman jewel thief. And he finds himself falling in love with with Imogen, but he knows that if he publicly pursues her and and seeks to marry her, then um, Ethel will find out who he is because she saw him enough the night of the burglary that she can kind of recognize him. So there's this tension there. Uh, but uh, And then there there's things that happen that I, I won't give it away, but uh, I really loved uh, Imogen as a character. Uh, she, I think she was about 17 or 18 in the novel. Um, you know, she's just about ready to go out into society and you know being introduced at balls and things and she just doesn't she doesn't want to get married marriage was kind of like a uh, ongoing plot theme in in the books i read i guess but you know she's not really interested in getting married uh well you can read it and see if that stays but her love is, is she loves collecting moths and it, it's so funny it, it's it's uh it's like her passion and she's almost like you know what we would call a tomboy today you know she's out with her brother they're hunting moths they're collecting these rare moths they find and there's just uh, there's another character who's falling in love with Imogen and he wants to um, try to uh, you know, woo her so he's trying to show interest in moth collecting it's just really funny um, so there's like several different types of story happening here with with a mystery with uh, comedy of manners, like it says, uh, kind of a romantic comedy, but also some social commentary uh, and, and the influence that good people can have on others. And the fact that, you know, maybe none of us are without the possibility of redemption, you know, that, that maybe there's a chance for all of us. So a really, really fascinating story. And it's definitely ended up being one of my favorite reads of the year. And it was really good. Highly recommend it. So uh, that's really all I got through for Victober this year. Uh, I feel like I've done better in years past, but some of these books were longer. Um, and A Burglary, though it wasn't terribly long novel, it was um, like three or 400 pages long. Uh, but the reading was very dense. It, it felt like, like I was joking with myself that it, it felt like, uh, uh Amy, uh, it felt like the author had, had finally gotten access to, uh, thesaurus and was <laughs> trying to add in as many big words as she could, but not in a way that it didn't work. You know, it, it worked. It just took me a while to get into it. So, but once I did and kind of got the flow of her conversation of her writing style, it, it really clicked for me. Um, but but give some time to uh, really focus on this book. It'll be worth it. That'll be it for me today. Thank you so much for uh, watching. Let me know if you had read for Victober and what you read. List that down below in the comments. And I will talk to you again in the next video. So until then, take care and happy reading.